why don't we stand to our feet this morning? And let's begin to bask in the presence of God that is in this place. If you can just begin by lifting your hands. If you don't know what else to do, you can clap your hands this morning. You can open up your mouth and simply tell God that you love him. He's asking for a simple worship on today to just acknowledge that he's here. God, we love you. We exalt you today, Jesus. We magnify your name, oh God. We're so humbled, Jesus, to dwell in your tabernacle one more time, Lord. You are worthy of all praise today. You're worthy of all glory today. Father, we stand on your promises, your promises that are yea and amen. We thank you, Lord, that you've gone before us. You've leveled every mountain, Jesus. You've made paths straight today, oh God. And for this, Lord, we shall rejoice. We shall magnify you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. None higher, none greater. You are the great I am. You are the great I am today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It brings us great joy to worship you. It brings us great joy to magnify you. Why don't we join in with the angels this morning and cry holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy Jesus, holy, holy, holy. this atmosphere today if you come in with a need he's here for you he's here for you just grab a hold of faith this morning grab a hold of faith this morning because the king is here the king is surely here in this place hallelujah hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus Yes, we're standing on the promises of God today and we're not moved by what we see. Promises, we're standing on his promises. In him we have our confidence. He won't fail.
it straight this morning.
today Even in my darkest moments This will be the truth I'm holding The same God who made a way It's the same God who's here today Hallelujah Yeah I won't be shaken Even when I'm shaken I've done all I can do You're not done working Oh, I'll still be working
involved in all types of stuff in the world. We can be lost in the world, but we're here because our God is able to bring us out that he might bring us in. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a great God we serve. Come on, he's worthy of a great praise this morning. Hallelujah, we're not ashamed of our God because he is truly great and greatly to be praised. Amen. There's names that are placed on the screen this morning. There are those that need healing in their bodies, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, God is able to meet every one of those needs in terms of his ability to heal. There are also those that have special needs. They have what some people call unspoken requests, but we need to speak them out to God and begin to declare what we need and he'll meet every one of those needs. Amen. And there's also those that need salvation. Our God dies for the opportunity so that we can be saved. And so this morning we're going to go to him right now in prayer, expecting for great things to happen. I don't pray that God is expecting nothing to happen. I know that he's going to hear and he's going to answer my prayer. So let's go to God right now with great faith and confidence, knowing that he will hear and answer our prayers this morning. Lord, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy towards us, Lord. Lord, you've been good to us, oh God. Lord, you've loved us, oh God, when we were unlovable, oh God. When we, oh God, we're doing things, oh God, that were displeasing to you, Lord. You've looked down on us with compassion and with mercy, oh God. And though we are in the wrong place at the wrong time, but because of your love and your mercy, you spared us. Lord, you've been good to us, oh God, and you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our adoration. You're worthy, Jesus, oh God, of our praise. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us, oh God. Lord, you've been good to us and we love you because you first loved us, oh God. And we thank you for teaching us what love is, Lord God. Lord God, that you sacrifice for us. And so this morning we might not feel like it, but we'll give you the sacrifice of praise. We'll lift up our hand this morning and declare that our God is worthy of praise and honor. We love you and we honor and we pray right now, oh God, that you are here and answer our prayers, oh God. Pay attention, we pray, oh God, for our supplication. Lord, we pray, oh God, for those that have a need, oh God, in their lives for healing. Lord, we pray that you touch their bodies, Lord God. Deliver them, oh God, from the pain and torment, oh God, of their disease and sickness, Lord. We know, oh God, if you speak the word only, surely they'll be healed, oh God. They can be healed instantly, oh God. This morning, oh God, somebody will be healed. Somebody will be delivered from their pain. Somebody will be delivered from their torment, oh God, because you're a God of mercy and grace and compassion. And so, oh God, we rely on it, oh God, not that we deserve this thing, oh God, but because you've loved us, oh God, with an everlasting love. And we pray, oh God, for those also that have a special need, oh God, whatever it may be, in their finances, oh God, in their, oh God, lives, Lord Jesus, with their family. Lord, we pray that you have mercy on them, oh God. Provide for them, oh God, because you are provider, oh God. Touch the lives of their family, oh God. We pray, oh God, save, oh God, their family members, oh God, and bring peace into their homes, Lord God. Lord God, you know, oh God, what they're going through, the mental torment, oh God, and the emotional distress. Lord, the more than able, oh God, to bring joy, oh God, to bring life into their situations, oh God. Let them know, oh God, though we can be endure for a night, oh God, joy comes in the morning. We pray also, Jesus, oh God, for those that need salvation, that you would, oh God, have mercy on them, oh God. Lord God, you promise in your word that you will pour out your spirit on all flesh, Lord. And we pray, oh God, that you will do that this morning, oh God. Not just in this place, Lord, but also around every daughter of work, oh God. Every UPC church, oh God. Every apostolic church, oh God. Bring also revelation to false churches, Lord God. That they might see you and know that you are the mighty God. That you revealed yourself in the Christ. And we pray, oh God, that you do these things according to your will, according to your glory, and the glory to your honor. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, believe God has answered your prayer this morning. Go ahead and thank him like you believe it's going to happen. Come on, go ahead and give him thanks like you believe it's going to happen. I think some God, sometimes God is saying, let me see how much you believe it. The word of God says, according to your faith, be unto you. I just believe God for anything nowadays. He's been so good to me. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. We want to appreciate all of our guests for being here this morning. We thank you for making your way to the house of the Lord this morning. We do appreciate you. We thank God for you. We've been praying that the Lord will send you here. We might not know you by name. Amen. But that you exist. We've been praying that you show up. Amen. If you come into the city of Tampa, we're praying that you will stop by and see what God is doing here. So because you're here, God has answered our prayers. And we truly appreciate you answering the call of God. We pray that the Lord will bless you. 
amen, this, in this place. Amen. On behalf of our bishop, Bishop Daniel Dave and his wonderful wife and family, as well as our pastor, Pastor Rashidi Collins, his wife and family, thank you so much for being here in New Life. Why don't we give all of our guests a warm applause, amen, for being here this morning. We do appreciate them. Amen. Right now, why don't we pay close attention to our morning news as it's played on the uh, monitors. Bonjour, and welcome to New Life Tabernacle. We are excited to see you today. There's a number of events that you and your families can get involved in. Let's take a look at our upcoming events. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If you have a low fever or other COVID-like symptoms, we are asking that you worship with us online. Be sure to observe all social distance protocols to keep everyone safe. Students and young adults, it's time for outreach. Join Driven Student Ministries on Saturday, August 27th at 1 p.m. as we take over Claymore Crossing's apartments and show our community love. The bus will depart the New Life Campus at 1 p.m. For more information, please see Minister Andrew Cowan. It's Mentorship Saturday and the Mail Division is doing a double move. Join Yat boys ages 3 to 4 and Yamit boys ages 5 to 12 as they gear up for their interactive and fun enrichment session. Both groups will meet on Saturday, August 27th in the Family Life Center at 9 a.m. and pickup will be at noon. Parents are welcome to volunteer. For additional information, contact Andre Brown, Darius Newman, or Rock Merville or email christianeducation at yournlt.com. Girls ages 3 to 12 are invited to the NLT campus for Mentorship Saturday on August 27. Our Sunbeams ages 3 to 4 will continue their enrichment series entitled Big Girls, and our I Am Special group ages 5 to 12 will continue their series called Blossoming. Food will be provided. For more information, please email christianeducation at yournlt.com. Parents, drop off your kids at their enrichment and join Wiley for an hour of self-care. Yes, personal fitness is self-care. Grab your sneakers and meet us in the ladies' fitness room in the Family Life Center on Saturday, August 27th from 9 to 10 a.m. Entry fee is only $5 and all ladies are welcome. See Alexis Callum or email christianeducation at yournlt.com for more information. Are you looking for a brotherhood that you can connect and grow with? Come and connect with our young men of valor ages 13 to 18 on second and fourth Sundays from 1.30 to 5 p.m. as we dive into our ACT series and bond with each other through activities and fellowship. If you have questions, please contact Cambrell Ejene or email christianeducation at yournlt.com. Young ladies ages 13 to 18 are invited to join YLE for a very special enrichment as we continue to walk through our ladylike series with the focus on being God's masterpiece. There will be a special guest speaker. Join us Sunday, August 28th in between services in room 207-208. See Alexis Callum or email christianeducation at yournlt.com with questions. Hey New Life family, we want your memories. We are seeking your photos, videos, and stories to use in our upcoming anniversary celebration. Please send all submissions to marketing at yournlt.com or see Kenyatta Harris for details. So let's see what's going on this week. Needing more information? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at UNLT or at UNLT.com. Thank you for your attention to these announcements. Now let's have an awesome service. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for all of the announcements. I mean, if you're a guest and you're visiting with us today and you're wondering what can you get involved in, everything. Amen. Anything that we have going on, you're welcome to get involved in that. And if you have any questions, please see one of the ushers or greeters will uh, get you connected to whomever can give you more information regarding that particular event. So we want you to get involved. Amen? Amen. Right now, why don't we prepare our hearts and minds this morning for offering? Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. He's been good to us. I'm grateful. Amen. We can stand. 
and we're going to give to the Lord this morning. Amen. And the Lord, the Bible says, loves a cheerful giver. That's why in this church we clap and we get excited when it's time to give. Amen. We're excited because two things. One, we know that God is the one that gave to us and he didn't have to and he supported us. And so we're happy to give back to him. But also we want to see the furtherance of the kingdom. We want to see souls saved. We want to see individuals come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as we have. And so we support that. So we're excited about the opportunity to give. Amen. Amen. I don't feel like it's an obligation, but I feel like it's an opportunity. Amen. And it is truly an opportunity. And when we do that, God will give back to us. So let's give this morning cheerfully, trusting that God is going to bless. Amen. There are uh, ways that you can give that you'll see on the screen, the New Life Tabernacle app, yournlt.com forward slash give, as well as you can text to give. Uh, the ushers will also give you instructions as to uh, giving this morning by way of the kiosk that they have. And then we also have giving stations around the sanctuary. So you're welcome to give that way. Amen. Why don't we go before the Lord right now in prayer and give thanks for this opportunity to give. Lord, we thank you again for your grace and mercy towards us, oh God. Lord, the only reason we're able to give is because you gave first. And so, God, we follow in your footsteps, oh God, cheerfully, oh God, thanking you, oh God, that you've drawn us, oh God, closer to you, oh God, and you've given us this opportunity to be more like you. And, oh God, because you've given to us, oh God, we give cheerfully back to you. We give to others, oh God. And, Lord God, we thank you, God, for changing our hearts. We're not greedy, oh God, as some may be. But because, oh God, you've loved us, we love others, oh God. And we love the ministry. And so we give back to it, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for your willingness to give to us yet again, oh God. You're going to bless us because we're giving today. And I pray that your hands continually be on us, oh God. Help us always to have hearts to give. That will always be cheerful givers, oh God. Knowing that we're more like the Lord when we do so. And we give you glory in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. The service is in the hands of the ushers. Let's continue in that same vein of worship. We don't cry out to God out of sadness, but we worship him and rejoice because his, because his promise was fulfilled on the third day. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. He became sin who knew no sin. His righteousness, his body was broken for our transgressions, but I'm so glad that's not
issues, the financial crisis.
Sunday morning. You're not supposed to act like that on Sunday morning. Y'all are shouting too much on Sunday morning. Y'all are giving God the glory too much on Sunday morning. Y'all are making too much noise on Sunday morning. But give him the glory today if you know God brought you out of something. If you know God made a way for you out of nowhere. If you know God gave you deliverance. Get him out that grave today. Lift those hands to heaven and give him the glory of the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Somebody shout, glory. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost trying to help us today. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm out of this grave. I'm not. I refuse to let the devil shut my mouth or sit me down. I'm not going to let death hold me down. Somebody needs to go to rebuking the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. And somebody needs to speak life. Is there anybody in the building that's ready to speak life? your neighbor and say live in the name of Jesus look at somebody beside you and say live 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 oh, hallelujah hallelujah Woo. boy you can you can be seated if you want to but I feel I feel a miracle in the house today Sometimes, sometimes you got to praise God until the miracle happens. Help me with these monitors up here. Sometimes you need to praise God until the miracle happens. So, sometimes you need to make up your mind that you're not going to shut your mouth. That you're not going to sit down. That you're not going to be quiet until a healing is released. Until a miracle is released. Until deliverance is released. You got to praise God until the miracle happens. My, 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 my. Is there anybody that has a yet praise in the house today? Glory to God. I'm going to praise God until something happens. I'm going to give God the glory until something happens. Clap your hands until something happens. Shout the name of Jesus until something shifts. Shout hallelujah until something transforms, until something rearranges. Praise God, praise God, you may be seated. Who in the presence of Almighty God. Signs and wonders. And miracles are in the atmosphere right now. I want I want every worshiper to know you got liberty right now. I don't. I, I said I want every worshiper to know you have liberty right at this moment. I want you to stretch your hand out, and I want you to entertain the presence of Almighty God. We're we're not in a rush. I want you to know. I want you to just entertain His presence for just a moment. Just lift your hand and say, Jesus, you can have your way right where I'm sitting, right, right where I'm standing. Just wave your hand to him and tell him how much you love him. Entertain. Let us entertain the presence of God for just a moment. You've got liberty to tell him how much you love him. You've got liberty to tell Jesus how much you appreciate him. You've got liberty to give God the glory and magnify him and exalt him just right now. Just entertain his presence. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. His presence is here. And the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. A lot of times, the things that we're needing answers for, if we can just get into the presence of God, then the problem would be solved. Matter of fact, the more we praise him today, the more we need to know that God says he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we praise God, we're, we're actually creating the atmosphere for the Lord to have his way and do what he wants to do in the midst of the people of God. We're grateful for you in the house of the Lord today. We believe God's going to bless you. God's going to strengthen you. God's going to help you. Amen. And I just believe that healing is here. Deliverance is here. I believe, amen, that blessing is here. Praise God. Not just for you, but I'm, I'm wanting to see God release generational blessing in the house of God. Is there anybody that want to see not just you blessed, but everybody connected to you blessed? How many want everybody in your family saved and everybody in your family full of the Holy Ghost? How many want, amen, generational blessing to be released into your family? Praise God. God's going to do it for you today. God's going to make a way for you today. And we're glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us for the first, second, or third time, we're just wanting to welcome you. And we know that those of you that have been here uh, if you came here more than twice, we've already claimed you as family. Matter of fact, to be honest, when you came here once, we claimed you as family. Praise God. Amen. So we're glad you're in the house. Would you clap your hands for all of our wonderful guests that are with us today? We so appreciate them. We welcome you on behalf of our bishop. Thank God for you being in the house of God. We want, amen, Minister Lemuel Harris to come and talk to us a little bit about how God can continue to give us increase. Clap your hands as he comes very quickly. Amen. Praise again. New life. And I'll be real brief. I'm going to start uh, just by mentioning on third Sundays, uh, we have what we call Mortgage Reduction Sunday. And as the uh, title uh, seems to suggest, is that our desire is to reduce our mortgage. My desire is to see it uh, eliminated. Amen. And so we come together on these third Sundays and we give towards that goal of reducing the mortgage and um, I have a testimony that I want to share with you um, because I preached last Sunday night regarding investing in Jesus. And um, after which, uh, no surprise to me, individuals came to me talking about um, investing naturally. Amen. Investing naturally. Uh, so several individuals that come to me talk to me about that and I've talked to people. Uh, throughout the week regarding it. And some people gave testimonies and some said, here's what their desires were. And we've had conversations about that. And there is one anonymous individual. Don't ask me who it is, but an anonymous individual uh, had a testimony, Pastor. And they said, now, they, had, they were involved in stock and investing and so forth. And um, they heard that after hearing the message and the Lord dealt with their heart, they, were, they bought into the concept in, of investing in Jesus because that was the purpose of it. It wasn't really about money, but it was connected to the principles of money and, and investing. And, and let me tell you something about myself. Whenever the Lord deals with me that way, he always backs it up with some monetary miracle to prove what I'm saying is right. Without fail, it's, a, it's, it's uncanny. I don't have time to go into all of that, but my wife will probably testify. Every single time, it's, and I say, it happened again. So that night, somebody, you know, actually blessed me with something. The Lord said, I'm, I'm proving it. But what the greater thing was this. Um, the, the individual says, now, after that, they had, they had invested in some stuff in stock, and it wasn't doing so well. They were waiting for something for a long time, like a year or something, for something to happen, and they were down a lot. The next day, on Monday, the stock market, I don't know if you follow it, but the stock market didn't do too well last week overall. But their portfolio, in the midst of a sea of red, something happened and it changed. Everything red, but that changed. And they started making money on a particular stock. Watch this. They say by the end of the week, they were up over 9000 almost $10,000 they made in one week. But they, they had in their heart, I'm going to invest in Jesus at the end of the sermon. 
So what God did was he proved himself in the natural concerning the spiritual word that was spoken. So I'm going to say it again, invest in Jesus. If God is doing stuff like that, I'm going to invest in Jesus. Listen, I need my spiritual life blessed, but I want my natural life blessed. So I'm going to invest in Jesus. And so whenever we talk about giving, I see it as an opportunity for God to show him, himself strong in the spiritual and in the natural. And so I said, man, I, you know, I rejoice with them that rejoice. I'm grateful to hear that God is blessing that way. And so I'm giving you an opportunity this morning again, this yeah. Sunday. Let's see what God does this week. Amen. So today I'm, we're saying, listen, give to this mortgage reduction and God will bless you. Yes, he will. Invest in Jesus. Here's your way to physically invest in Jesus, your monetary, uh, um, all of your, your finances and watch God bless you naturally and spiritually. And so on today, we ask that individuals give $25 or more. Whatever you want to invest in Jesus this morning, do it. Amen. And I guarantee you that God will bless you. Amen. Amen. People don't get excited about it. I'm talking about 10,000. How many of y'all make 10 grand a week? Okay. Well, I'm thinking maybe I need to invest a little bit more in Jesus. I, all right. Lord bless you, Pastor. I wish somebody would clap their hands onto the Lord. Would you stand to your feet with me? These ushers are going to come around and give you an opportunity to give to the work of the Lord. And you can, and you can do so. Or if you want to come up and, and, just, and just give in the buckets here. And, um, I'm, I, you know, he said $10,000 a week. I'm praying that on some of you that you... I want that to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Praise God. You know, some folks can't rejoice with them that rejoice. Now, they're all right with weeping with them that weep, but they don't get too happy when somebody else gets a blessing. But I want to be one of the people that get happy when somebody else is blessed. Is anybody grateful when somebody else gets a blessing? I want to see God do something in your life and work a miracle out for you. Praise God. Amen. So we're believing for you today. I want to go to the book of Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. And um, as those ushers are going, and they won't stop anything, they'll continue to go. You can continue to give. Amen. As I get ready to read the word, I'm going to read actually two portions of scripture, Luke 18, um, beginning in verse 1. And then we're going to go to James 5, uh, beginning in verse 13. So Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. Amen. I want to acknowledge um, uh, Deacon and Sister Ferguson again. We probably didn't mention it last week. We should have, but uh, they had such a very special anniversary. Amen. Mother Ferguson, how many years was that this, this week? 51 years that they've been married. Wow. And uh, we appreciate uh, Deacon and Mother Ferguson very much. And, uh, you know, 51 years is an example to the body of Christ, of how we ought to be. Amen. I see uh, Mother Williams and her husband over there, same thing. Amen. They just, they just example. We got some good examples in the house of God. Amen. Thank God for them. Luke chapter 18, beginning verse 1. He spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city... A judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary, and he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, here's the question. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? And then James chapter 5. James is actually the brother of of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you read the epistle of James, that's not James, uh, one of the 12 disciples. This is James, the actual brother of the Lord Jesus. So James had 
uh, James was Jesus' brother. Jude also was Jesus' brother. James chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias, and this is Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. I want to preach to you from this subject today, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. As we continue talking about faith, uh, God's dealing with me still in this area. We took a little break for a few weeks, uh, but we're still dealing with this business of faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I believe God's trying to move the church into a place where we please him. God wants us to please him. And so it starts with faith. If we don't believe anything, we can't please him. We've got to mix what we hear, the word of God, when we hear it, we've got to mix it with faith for it to become effective in our life. Amen. So we want to we wanna talk about the prayer of faith. If you could put your Bibles down for just a moment, if you have the Holy Ghost, do me a favor, lift your hands, amen, and help me to pray in this building today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. Thank you, Lord God, for the blood that you shed for us at Calvary and all that you're doing in your church and through your people. Lord God, thank you that you're multiplying your people and strengthening us. Lord God, I thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you search us today and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there be some wicked way in us. Lead us in the way everlasting. Forgive us of every sin and thought, word, or deed, or what we have left undone. Create in us a clean heart, Lord Jesus. Renew a right spirit within us. And Lord God, I pray that faith will continue to increase in this church. Lord God, that we'll be drawing closer to you. You said that he that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we're seeking after you, O God. Lord God, you said we should seek first your kingdom and all its righteousness and everything else would be added to us. Lord God, we come preaching your kingdom today. Have your way in this place. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we'll forever give you the glory we bind satan in this place in jesus name and forbid him to operate and we loose the power of the holy ghost to bring salvation and deliverance and healing we give you the glory we give you the honor we give you the praise in jesus mighty name somebody that believes ought to say amen clap your hands on to the lord everybody and let out a shout hallelujah as loud as you can the Lord bless you. you. may be seated. I won't be long before you today. Amen. But we're going to share with you what the Holy Ghost has laid on our heart. Amen. As you're sitting right there, would you look to your neighbor, to your right, to your left? Just ask this question. Do you still believe? Just ask them. Do you still believe? Amen. And if they look like they said yes, well, tell them pray again. Pray again. My, my wife's faith is annoying it is it is uh you know i you know i'm just gonna be honest and vulnerable with you this morning that my wife faith it just it, it annoys me gets on my last nerve it does because she has this habit of having faith in the face of the facts so the issue is I you know I'd like to think that I'm a man of faith but in in all reality I I want I'm, I'm very sensible so to me things have to make sense and so I dwell in the realm of reality I you know so I'm just saying why don't you just call a spade a spade this is what it is. State the facts as you see them. However, 
Many, and I know some of you married couples in here, you can't compute what I'm about to say, but I've actually had arguments with my wife over faith where she's speaking something that doesn't make sense. Y'all not saying nothing. And I'm saying something that makes sense. But she will say crazy things to me like, I'll say, these are the facts, and then she'll say, but my God is able. I'm just going to tell you right now, when she gets into the, but my God is able, I get a little bit perturbed because I, I try to remind her I'm Pentecostal too. And I believe God's word too. Uh, yeah, but, but she says, well, you believe God's word, but you're not, you're not operating in faith. Right now. So how are you going to tell? I'm the preacher. I'm telling you that I'm operating in faith. But she, she's telling me that my God is able to do this. And my God is able to do that. And I'm telling her it is impossible for this to take place. And she's telling me with God. Oh! I'm saying you're being impractical in this particular situation. I even start quoting, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't. Yeah, so some of our discussions go left, primarily because many times she might ignore what's in front of her to believe for something that is beyond what it looks like. Because the Bible said we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. So... The thing about people of faith is they usually get on the nerves of folk that are struggling in that area. Mothers who believe that their children will be delivered. Loved ones who believe that their family members will be healed. Or, amen. Friends that believe that their co-workers can be saved. Men of God who believe that multi-million dollar buildings can be built. They usually say stuff that flies in the face of reality. They ignore the facts. The facts that that person is too far gone to be brought back. or The fact that the doctor gave such a bad report that there's no coming back. Or that the co-worker is so committed to the club that they probably won't get saved. These people ignore those facts. And say that God can do anything that he says he's going to do. And so then, the business of having faith and the prayer of faith, Jesus is really calling on us today to dream again, to pray again, to believe again. Jesus is, Jesus is telling somebody under the sound of my voice that you've prayed already and felt frustrated in your prayer. Because it doesn't look like the answer to your prayer has come. The Holy Ghost has anointed me today to tell somebody in the building under the sound of my voice that you got to learn how to pray again. You got to learn, amen, to pray the prayer of faith because the context of the message today is prayer. Amen. If we don't pray the prayer of faith, we won't really see any results. And can I tell somebody today that sometimes the reason why the answer has not yet come is because God is trying to drive you to a place of deeper faith. Because to get the miracle that you're praying for, you need a higher level of faith than you have right now. And, and only trial and tribulation, only trouble and circumstances that don't make sense can Bring you to the place where you pray the way God wants you to pray. This is why you should never stop praising God in spite of what it looks like and in spite of what it feels like. You got to learn how to give God the glory despite your circumstance because you can't allow your faith to be affected by what's going on around you. Sometimes you just need to go ahead and glorify God and shout hallelujah and magnify Jesus. Amen. And lift up the name of your king because God's about to step into your situation and if somebody asks you how come you're still praising God even though you're going through so much tell somebody I'm praising him in advance I'm praising him in anticipation I'm praising him believing his word I'm praising him
him standing on his promises. I'm praising him because my God is able to do anything but fail. I'm praising him because I've already seen what he can do. And if he did it before, I believe my God can do it again. If he brought me out before, I believe he can bring me out again. And I'm going to shout. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout hallelujah. I'm going to raise my hands because I'm believing for the impossible. I know I know I know you've been through so much amen the enemy has beat you up you felt like throwing in the proverbial towel but I come to encourage somebody in the Holy Ghost I come to reach for somebody who's on their last leg I come to talk to somebody whose back is against the wall someone who's on the ropes someone who feels like they're on the canvas and the referee is about to count you up I believe that in the name of Jesus the Holy Ghost is about to pick somebody up off of the ground of their life and you gonna stand up again in the name of Jesus and the thing that God promised you shall surely come to pass because let me just third notice in the spirit realm today the devil is a liar but God is the truth and if God says it somebody needs to believe it if God said it somebody need to shout hallelujah if God said it I wish I could get a ridiculous crazy praiser to step out in the Holy Ghost and go to magnifying God in spite of how ridiculous it looks in spite of how ludicrous it seems your God is able your God is powerful your God is credible your God is a way maker your God can and will do it hallelujah I'm telling you new life we got to move to another level in the worship and the praise and the faith that we have in this church I rebuke every demon that's been sitting on you for a few years trying to rob praise out of your belly trying to take the word of God out of your mouth trying to give some kind of contrary word wherever that seed of doubt wherever that spirit came from wherever that lying devil came from that told you that God's promises weren't coming to pass I rebuke it in the name of Jesus as a matter of fact I speak prophetically now in authority in the Holy Ghost over the atmosphere of this church and I'm telling somebody in the building go and get your praise back go and get your faith back go and get your words back back go and get your promises back bring it back to the altar today and say God you said it you spoke revival you spoke the harvest you spoke the miracles you spoke the increase and God we're believing you today I need about 25 of y'all just to shout with a voice of triumph and a voice of victory I God Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I need you for about 30 seconds if you believe that God's about to save your family. If you're praising God for family members that are about to get the Holy Ghost. For about 30 seconds, I need you to shout like they're already here. I need you to picture them beside you. I need you to see them getting the Holy Ghost right here at this altar. I need you to dance like they're in here with you. Speaking in tongues and hey! Somebody take your praise up just a little bit this Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Tap your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to annoy you with my faith. I'm getting ready to pray in faith. I know it doesn't even make sense. I'm not trying to make it make sense. With God, it doesn't have to make sense. All you need is God to step in it. And it's going to transcend logic. Tell me it's not logical. Can I preach like I feel? 
Number one. Number one. God said to tell you, don't complain about what you need to be praying about. Well, I wish I had somebody here. You're talking to the wrong people. You're complaining about something you need to take to God. Because man can't fix what only God can fix. See, I got five of y'all because you're busy calling your uncle, busy calling Ray Ray, busy calling your best friend, busy calling somebody else when you need to get down on your knees and learn how to call on Jesus. See, that's why, that's why the old church had so much power. Amen. Because they went to calling on Jesus every chance they could get because they knew where to go. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4. In verse 6, it says, be careful or don't worry about anything, but in everything, not some things, everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. That means, quit worrying about the news that you got. Well, I'm speaking to somebody in the spirit today. Quit worrying about what they told you. Quit worrying about what it looks like. Quit picking up the phone and trying to get advice from people who have trouble of their own. They got their own problems. Glory to God, you need to go to God. And you need to say, Jesus, I'm bringing my cares to you. And I'm going to pray to you. I'm going to put my marriage before you. I'm going to put my children before you. I'm going to put my finances before you. I'm going to put my health before you. I'm going to put my family before you. I'm going to give prayer and supplication to you. And when I give it to you, I'm going to start thanking you in advance for what you've all... Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost trying to help somebody. I'm telling somebody, if you have enough faith today, you need to begin to just thank God as if the prayer you already prayed has already come to pass. Because according to this scripture, you need to thank God like it's already happened. So somebody need to open your mouth and go to thanking God right now. Just go ahead and stretch your hand out and begin to not just say what you want, begin to thank him like it's already happened. Somebody needs to say, thank you, God, for the healing that's already taking place. Thank you, God, that you've already turned the situation around. Thank you, God, that the victory is already mine. Thank you, God, for the miracles and the signs and the wonders. Thank you, God, for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, that you're working it out on my job. Thank you, Lord, that you're making a way in my family. Thank you. Thank you. the Lord wants to move the church to the supernatural dimension Jesus said why are you worried anyway Matthew chapter 6 verse 27 listen at the Lord as he asked the question which of you taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature which of you just thinking about it can do that why are you worried about clothes consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not, neither do they spin. Amen. And, and then yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these lilies. Wherefore, if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall be clothed watch this next verse for after all these things do the Gentiles seek and your heavenly father knows that you have need of all of these things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you I'm not telling you to praise God because I'm trying to hype you up I'm telling you to praise God because I'm wanting you to invite God into your situation because if you could just get God to where you are all the stuff you're worried about now you wouldn't have to worry about it any later and can I just 
talking to my kids last night and they said dad there's a spirit that's trying to sit us down and try, I'm talking about my children telling me that the devil trying to shut the church up and trying to keep us quiet but I said, said sometimes I feel myself glued to the seat when I should be getting praising God and feeling a liberty in the spirit and I said boy I'm going to tackle that demon here today in the mighty name of Jesus I don't know where you are in new life or what section in the building you're sitting but I speak liberty over every section in the name of Jesus whom the son set free is free indeed I speak liberty over your life today I speak freedom in the Holy Ghost and whatever has been sitting up chaining up your hands and shutting your mouth for so long I wish you would defy it in the Holy Ghost today and just get up and say I want God to be in my situation I need Jesus to show up in my circumstance open your mouth and say Jesus I'm going to praise you right now right here because I'm not going to complain anymore too much complaining this is the antecedent of all this the context of all this is prayer it's been, Jesus is teaching on prayer in Matthew 6 verse 7 he talks to his disciples he says but when you pray don't use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking but be not like them. Your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. That means you should spend less time asking God for stuff and more time just giving God the glory. See, I got five of you right there. Because we're so busy asking God for stuff, we forget that when we magnify God, we minimize the problem the more we magnify God the more we minif minimize the problem so that means I need to give God more worship I need to give God more praise I need to magnify God more and I need God to minimize the situation after this manner therefore pray your father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name starts off with praise your kingdom come not mine your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread amen and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom ended with praise and the power and the glory forever and ever this this prayer is full of praise at the beginning. Come on, somebody. And at the end, when's the last time you just came to God and didn't ask him to do your will, but asked God to do his will and didn't put petitions before him for your stuff, but just said, God, whatever you want to do, do it today. And then just went to praising him in an extended praise session. I know, I know I sound cliche today. I know I'm just saying stuff to you today that sounds like what people want to say. But can I just preach to somebody? There is actually power when you magnify God and you minimize the enemy can I tell you that if you complain you're gonna get in trouble with God you cannot fight a spiritual battle with natural weapons Bible says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6 I'm hurrying amen that the will we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And also it has in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you complain, you block the miracle. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10 says, don't, don't, we don't need to be amen like some of those. Don't murmur as some of them also murmured. Notice, and were destroyed of the destroyer. When we murmur and complain and doubt God, we open the door for destruction to come in. Some people wondering why I haven't gotten an answer to that is because I opened the door for the destroyer with my complaining. We complain too much when we need to bring stuff into the prayer closet and lift it up to God and say, God, we know you are able to fix this situation. So when you bring it to God and you say, God, you're able to fix this situation, you need to leave it on the altar. Glory to God. And you need to start shouting hallelujah. You need to start magnifying God. You need to give God the praise. You need to lift up Jesus. 
Tell you what some of us are busy doing. We come to the altar, lay stuff down, pick it up, and take it back. Oh, no. That's not what needs to happen. You need to come to the altar, lay it down, and praise your way back to where you came from. Oh, I wish I had somebody here today. Hallelujah to God. You need to come here and lay some stuff down. And when you lay it down, you need to shout your way back. Amen to your seat. Knowing that God has already dealt with it. Knowing that God already fixed it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Amen. Come here, Sister Tamika. Amen. Come on out here real quick. I want you to put a problem right down here on the altar. But when you put it on the altar, don't be like some folk. I want you to put it on the altar. Amen. And just come down here. You got a problem? Lay your burden down on this altar right here. Now, when you lay it down on the altar right here, I'm telling you that God Almighty is going to answer a prayer for this young lady and do something in her life that she never expected. She's going to lay that problem down on the altar altar today because she's not going to complain about it anymore. When she lays it down on the altar today, it's done. Now, Sister Tamika, leave it there and shout your way back because you know that God made a way. She's showing you what we need to do today. Somebody in this building, you need to get up in the Holy Ghost and say, I'm done with that problem. I'm fixing to lay it down on this altar. And when I put it on this altar, I'm not about to be taking it up again. I'm not about to be taking it back to my seat. Instead, I'm going to do what the Bible said. I'm going to put some thanksgiving on this. I'm going to put some... See, some of y'all just standing there looking all crazy, still holding on to stuff you should be letting go. God Almighty is saying today is the day. That's it. Today is the day you need to lay it down. And then you need to go to praising God. You need to say, God, I'm putting this sickness on the altar and I'm shouting with my healing. I'm shouting with my deliverance. I'm going to put this problem on the altar and God you're going to turn it around. I'm going to leave it with you. Man can't do nothing with it. People can't do nothing with it. But when I give it to God today, a miracle is getting ready to happen. Deliverance is getting ready to happen. Healing is getting ready to happen. Now when you put it on the altar, I want you to lift your hands and go to shouting. I want you to lift your hands and go to magnifying God. I want you to say, God, when I put it down today. I'm not about to take it up again. It belongs to you. You can do it, Lord God. You can heal, Lord God. You can make a way, Lord God. You can say, I feel the Holy Ghost getting ready to deliver somebody in this building. I wish there was a radical praiser who would get beside yourself, shout louder than you've ever shouted, dance more than you've ever danced, clap your hands more than you've ever clapped them. And believe God for the miracle. Oh, I feel God here. Shakatala Messiah. The miracle's already in the building. Lay that financial burden down and believe God to make a way. Lay that sickness down and believe God for the healing. Lay your marriage up here and believe God for reconciliation. Lay your children on this altar and believe God will be healing them and will be delivering them. Bring that backslider to the altar and say, God, I know you're able. Hallelujah, I'm going to praise you in advance. You're getting ready to bring them back to the house of God. Oh, Rabba Shata. Where my praise is at? Right here. See, God not trying to make you heavy today. God's trying to give you some joy. Unspeakable and full of glory. I don't know who you are. There's a song we used to sing in the church. I'm going to lay down my burdens down by the riverside. Somebody need to lay down your burden. Why are you walking around carrying that heavy burden? Jesus said, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon thee and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in spirit, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God doesn't want you to walk around with that burden, not one second longer. For those of you that are waiting for God to move, you about to miss it. 
you better you better lift your hands and say God I don't want you to pass by here and then pass me wherever you are you better get God's attention and say God whatever you're doing in this moment whatever you're doing right now in this season whatever you're doing right now at this time God I need you to do it for me if your mouth is shut you gonna miss this miracle open your mouth and shout the name of Jesus open your mouth and shout shout hallelujah open your mouth and say God I believe you I'm gonna pray again and the prayer of faith the prayer of faith the prayer of faith is about to do something in the midst of the people oh yes oh yes cancer is being healed right now at this moment faith faith just rose up in the building and I said cancer is being healed if there's cancer in the building I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus healing is coming to your body high blood pressure is coming off of you diabetes is going to be healed in your life you better praise God with me just a moment hallelujah all kinds of sickness all kinds of disease are getting ready to leave your body in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah there's an angel of healing that's in this building my God there's an outpouring of the miracle working power of God that is moving in the house right now lift your voice and begin to praise him begin to shout begin to believe God Some of you are still waiting for church as usual. But I wish you would get out of your comfort zone. And somebody need to stretch your hand out and say, God have your way. Hallelujah. The prayer of faith is here to save the sick. No more murmuring. No more No more complaining. Time for you to just give thanks. Because it's already done. spirit of healing is breaking out in the building I said the spirit of healing is getting ready there's about to be instantaneous there's about to be instantaneous healing I'm not just talking about gradual healing somebody's about to get an instant healing in the building right now as we're speaking right at this moment let your faith level rise because somebody's about to get an instant 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 healing it's about to happen right now if there was a pain somewhere in your body begin to move that place where the pain was and I'm telling you the pain is about to leave if there's a disease somewhere in your body put your hand on it right now if it was in your shoulder get to moving your hands if it was in your feet get to moving your feet my god if there was a pain in your back get to just bending forward and bending upward and I'm telling you healing is in the building I'm telling you deliverance is in the building I'm telling you breakthrough is in the building I'm telling you signs are in the building I'm telling you wonders are there is healing in the building whatever you need from God whatever you need from God whatever you need from God somebody lift your hand and go to getting that miracle go to getting that blessing go to getting that victory go to getting that deliverance go to believe in God let your faith level rise there's a healing here it's instant it's instant I don't care where you are in the building lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder right now and tell him whatever you need from God now is the time for you to open your mouth now is the time for you to shout now is the time for you to get it now is the time for you to go for it now is the time for you to have the victory believe God for something different
Holy Ghost happening right over here. That's it, young lady. Open your mouth and speak it out. Higher. Speak it. The Holy Ghost is being poured. There it is. The Holy Ghost is being poured out as we speak. I'm telling you, God is trying to overturn our plans. He's trying to rearrange our program. He's trying to step in. God is breaking forth. God is moving in our midst. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Ha, yeah. Oh yes. God Almighty is telling somebody in the building you need to raise the level of your expectation. You need to start believing God's about to do something. Whatever doubt you had, you need to curse that doubt. You need to rebuke Tayande. You need to rebuke that doubt and you need to raise the level of your expectation. Can I prophesy to somebody right now? Whatever you believe God for, you need to double that. Did you hear what I just said? Whatever you're asking God for, whatever miracle you're praying for, God is saying, I can do that, but I want you to double it. I want you to put something on it. I want you to believe God for beyond where you're believing right now. Somebody in here got a healing just now. If you in here and you got a healing, wave your hand. I want to see it. Look at this. Amen. Right over here. If you got a healing, if a pain left your body just now, I needed to wave your hand. If you know that something just left your body and you can actually wave your hand. Look at this. All over the building. A pain. My God. Well, I wish I had somebody that would praise God. I'm telling you. Shatala Messiah. There's going to be this very week somebody going to testify that healing came to my body. Somebody's going to testify this week that there was demonic interference messing with my house, messing with my family. I'm speaking for about 10 of you that'll shout right now if you believe God for this that every spirit, every demon that's come against your household, that's come against your family, if you will shout in the next 30 seconds in the name of Jesus that devil gonna have to leave your house immediately that spirit is going to have to take his hands off of your family off of your children I just need you for about 30 seconds to shout the name of Jesus somebody shout again God gave the parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint somebody shout again you say, well, I didn't have anything happen the last time that I gave God the praise. Nothing changed in my situation. Jesus said that woman went to the unjust judge. And because she kept going, the judge said, I'm going to do it for her. And then he said, if the unjust judge will do it for her, how about the ones that God has chosen? Somebody shout again. Somebody praise again. Somebody glorify God again. Is it preacher? Everybody look like they're having a good time. I don't feel anything. There's some of you standing right now in this building. You see people moving and you don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. You think something's wrong with you. That you don't feel anything. I've got good news for you. What's going on in here is not based on feeling. This has nothing to do with how you feel. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to feel nothing. You don't have to feel anything. 
but you have to raise the level of your expectation. Watch this. And you got to speak in faith. So what that means is, even when you don't feel anything, you need to say something. Did y'all hear what I just said? Even when you don't feel anything, you need to say something. If you don't know what else to say, say thank you, Jesus. If you don't know what else to say, say hallelujah. The only thing you shouldn't do is keep your mouth shut. Well, I wish I had somebody here. As soon as you feel the spirit of silence coming on you, you need to just scream out hallelujah real loud. Say, so what are you doing? I am challenging what the enemy is trying to send to me. Then after you speak in faith, you need to act in faith. Do me a favor. Take somebody by the hand real quick and just kind of pull on them a little bit. And say, it's time for you to do something. Look, tell, take somebody by the hand. Just tell them, it's time for you to do something. Time for you to do something. Listen to what the preacher is saying. It's time for you to do something. It's time for you to do something. You've been, you've been walking around in circles for too long. You need to, you need to do something with what God has given. Take that person by the hand again. Sometimes people need a little bit of help. Just kind of pull on them. Say, we, it's time for you. You got to get up and do something. You got to get up and do something. Hallelujah. Get up and raise your hands. Get up, get up and jump. Get up and shout for joy. Do something. Do something to show God you believe him. Do something to show God that you believe his word. Do something. Do something to show God. Hallelujah. That you have faith in what he said. Y'all better hear this preacher. I'm in this building today. Amen. God bless you. Some of you need to just do, some of you just need to walk to the altar. When you walk to the altar, shakataya, as you are walking to the altar, there are chains going to fall off as you're walking to the altar. As you walk to the altar, amen, there are spirits that are trying to hold you that are going to have to back up off of you. As you walk, some of you are just walking by faith up here. Look at that. Look at this man walking all the way from the back. Hallelujah. As you're walking to the altar, I'm telling you years, years of stuff that have come against your life as you're walking is breaking off of your life today. Shakata la bahaya. As you're walking, these men that are walking, Jesus is doing something in them. So sometimes you got to move when God says move. You got to do something when God says do something. You know, sometimes you need to just take somebody by the hand and say, I know you need to go, so I'm just going to take you. Just come on. Just come on and just take them by the hand and say, we're going down to this altar. I got to do something. I got to, I got to do something. I've got to do something. I've got to do something. If you keep on doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. But if you want something different to happen, you've got to change something in the equation. Did you know, did you know that faith only works if you act on faith? Here's what the Bible says. Faith without works is dead. As the body without the spirit is dead. Faith without works is dead. For example, if you want a job and you're believing God for a job, you need to actually fill out an application. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. And you need to actually go down there and get an interview. Talk back to me, somebody. And if they don't call you, you need to call them. And you need to, I'm talking about do something. Show up down at the job and say, I came for the job. And they'll say, well, you didn't have an interview. Say, I know that. But I believe that I'm supposed to have this. You want that house? Go, go down to the house. Amen. And walk around the house. I see you. And just say, this house is ours. It belongs to our... Come on! You've got to do something! You've got to... 
If you're going to start a business, amen, just don't dream about starting the business. Actually, get up and start the business. Do something. Go down there and file for LLC. Shock Incorporate. Do something. May I show you something? See this lady up here? She's getting ready to be baptized. Look, look up in the, look behind me. Look behind me. That girl just got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that was? She said, I'm going to act on my faith. You can't get saved if you don't do something. Jesus already did all that he was going to do. Jesus already died on the cross. He already shed his blood for you. Jesus already made a way for you. When he died on that cross and rose again, it was so you could live. So now the ball is in your court. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Put that up, Shan. Mark 16, 15. Boy, I got, I got to go. Look at what it says. Brother Burnett, it says, Baptizer in the pool, listen to what it says. It said, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what I'm doing right now. Listen to what it says. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That means you got to do something. You can't just believe. You need to act on your belief. Just get up from where you are. Let me show you again. Acts chapter 2 verse 37. Pull that up. Where are my praises at? Lift your hand one time and shout hallelujah. Let's, con let's just continue to make the devil nervous. <laughs> Bible said when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, I want you to turn to your neighbor real quick beside you. Where were we? In the pew or up here at the altar? Turn to your neighbor and say, what shall we do? Just ask him. What shall we do? Come on, tap somebody on the shoulder. Say, what are we supposed to do now? What are we supposed to do? Ask somebody down there in the back. Ask somebody down there in the back. What, what are we supposed to do now? All my, all my friends from the Sally, if you're from the Sally, here's, this is it. What, what are we supposed to do now? Look at the answer. The answer says, repent. Come on, acting in faith. And be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. That means when you get baptized, all your sins are washed away. All your sins are forgiven. All your sins are removed. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here's another one. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Listen to this word right here. Listen to this. Here's the question. And now, why tarriest thou that's old english let me put it in 2022 english and now what are you waiting for touch three people and ask them what you waiting for come on just ask them what are you waiting for you're waiting for an angel to come down and put it in your hand tap your neighbor again and say god is putting it in your hand right now if you give god the glory right now the healing is here right now the deliverance is here right now somebody needs to shout like you got it right now what are you waiting for what are you waiting for tell your neighbor arise get up I rebuke that spirit that's trying to make you sit down and be lazy spiritually. I'm not talking about sitting down here. I'm talking about sitting down spiritually. You can sit down naturally, but I'm talking about when the enemy tries to make you quit. I'm preaching to somebody in the building, don't quit. I'm preaching to somebody in the building, don't stop. I'm preaching to somebody in the building, pray again. Praise again. Shout again. Lift your hand again. Shout hallelujah again. Give God the glory again. Again. The prayer of faith. Brother O'Neill, we might as well quit preaching too long today. I'm already at 1246, but I'm going to say it again. Turn to somebody beside you and say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Nothing to wait for. We don't need to wait. And you know, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Miracle signs and wonders are not coming to the church. Miracle signs and wonders are here right now. 
One more time. Wave your hand if you felt a healing come in your body today. Just wave your hand. All the people that felt a healing come in your body. I want you to come out to the middle right here. If you felt healing, shakatala bahaya. Whether it was a pain that left your body, you know something miraculous. I want you to come right in the middle right there. If you felt a healing, just come right in the middle right where I'm pointing to. Shokoramashata. What the Lord is showing me today, the Lord is showing me today that we need to get a spirit of thanksgiving and gratefulness in the house of God. God is wondering, are we grateful for the miracle? Do you know that Jesus healed 10 lepers one time and he sent them to the priest and only one leper came back to tell him thank you. Hallelujah. If you're in the building and Jesus healed your body today, I want you to come in the middle right here. Right in this circle right here. But here's what I want you to do when you come. I want you to lift your hand and I want you to give him your best praise for about 30 seconds. I want you to show him that I'm grateful for the healing. The Lord is saying that there's such a prophetic anointing right now that the praise that they're giving right now is getting ready to extend the miracle all through the building. Look, another one has just been baptized in water. Somebody give God the glory. Everybody go to somebody beside you and ask them the question that we just asked. Ask them, what are you waiting for? Everybody in the building, go with somebody beside you and just say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Don't you know the prayer of faith is going to bring some difference? Listen to me. Right now. Right now. Don't, if you're in here and you were baptized somewhere else before you came here, or you've never been baptized before. So if you were baptized somewhere else, or you've never been baptized before, you don't have the Holy Ghost yet. The prayer of faith is going to do the work in your life today. The prayer of faith. Right now, the water is troubled. Everybody that needs a miracle, they can have it right now. Everybody that needs deliverance can have it right now. Ask your neighbor beside you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? If there's a man in the building that needs to get baptized in Jesus' name, you might have been baptized in titles somewhere else. You need to come right now and do what that young man just did. You need to come right now over to my right side, over here. And you need to come to the water. And you need to come and be baptized in Jesus' name today. 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 You need to act in faith today. If there's a young lady on this side, amen young lady anywhere in the building that hasn't been baptized in jesus name yet or you were baptized somewhere else you need to come over on this side you need to come around to the water and do what this precious soul is getting ready to do right now amen about to be baptized in water in the name of jesus come on ask your neighbor what are you waiting for it's time for you to act in faith ask them ask, ask somebody else you already asked that person ask somebody else ask them what are you waiting for what are you waiting for what are you waiting for we got anything to wait for you don't have anything to lose and you have heaven to gain you've got nothing to lose look at this soul that just got baptized somebody give God the glory listen God is changing the atmosphere at this church I need you to hear me God is not going to allow us to be complacent any longer God is going to move us to a higher level of worship a higher level of intercession a higher level of praise God is saying I'm trying to save souls I'm trying to deliver the oppressed I'm trying to heal the sick grab somebody by the hand real quick just take them by the hand especially if you know them take them by the hand get ready to pray the prayer of faith getting ready to pray the prayer of faith Amen. Join up with somebody that looked like they got faith today. Hallelujah. There are people under the sound of my voice. You've been battling the spirit of depression for the last six months. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. God is saying today, we're going to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hey! 
Shatalabasaya. You're going to put on the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. God's giving you beauty for ashes today. Everyone stand with me all over the building. We're getting ready to go, but we're going to pray the prayer of faith. There's still people that need to come by and get baptized. There's still people today, today. You don't need to go out of this room. You don't need to leave this building without putting on the name of Jesus in the waters of baptism. Just like you saw those souls just do. God is speaking to you right now. God is reaching for you. Take that hand. Lift the hand up to heaven right now. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to forgive. And then we're going to ask God to deliver. We're going to ask God to sanctify. I want you to open your mouth. Those of you that have the Holy Ghost. I need you to begin to, I need you to begin to lift up your voice as loud as you can all through the building. From the back to the front. From the front to the back. Come on. Raise the level of your expectation. Raise your level of prayer. Raise the level of the anointing right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Somebody's in need of a miracle. Somebody's in need of a healing. Lord God, somebody's dealing with depression. Somebody's dealing with spiritual oppression. We rebuke every foul spirit. We come against every spirit of infirmity. We come against every disease. We come against every sickness. We plead the blood of Jesus over every soul that is in this place. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Lord God, we pray that you have your way. Lord God, we pray that you continue to work miracles. Lord God, we pray you continue to save deliverance. Lord God, save their children. Lord God, restore their marriage. Lord God, save their family. Lord God, heal the sick. Lord God, raise them up from the bed of affliction. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're sending your angels now with sword out drawn to fight against the enemy on their behalf. We plead the blood of Jesus over every person here. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let Jesus arise and let his enemies be scattered. We're going to give you the glory, God. We're going to give you the honor, God. We're going to give you the praise, God. We're going to declare it done today. We believe you for the miracle. We thank you for the miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody need to shout out the name of Jesus. Somebody need to shout glory. Somebody need to shout hallelujah. God said it today. God said it today.
too late for you if you're still in the building under the sound of my voice. Just like he just got baptized in Jesus' name. The water is still ready for you to come. Make the step and come. Take action and come. The prayer of faith will save you today. Amen. We want you to come and believe God for your salvation and healing and deliverance. Remember their service tonight. Amen. At 6 p.m. Please be at the house of the Lord tonight for service. It's going to be a power pack service tonight. You don't want to miss tonight. Amen. As God will begin to move here. Amen. Also, praise God. Please just do everything you can. Amen. To support the work of the Lord. Be in every service. Be here Wednesday night. Praise God. Amen. Do what you can to make sure you don't miss what God is doing. God is doing a new thing in us. You need to walk in this new thing of faith that God is doing in us. God bless you. If you have children at the FLC, please pick up your children at the FLC. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Come on and be baptized. If you don't have it yet, come on and do it now. In Jesus' name. The stories that have proved the faithfulness. Now I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend, and there is beauty in what I can understand. Cause Jesus, it's you. 